the median rent in the U.S. zooms beyond $2,000. Hey, everybody, you're watching Bull, Boom, Bear, Bust. No camera today, but that's okay. You're not going to need it to absorb this information. And I have to ask the people that have been saying I'm wrong now for the last two years that these prices, uh, these costs, were going to continue to rise. What is happening? <laughs> Why are you continuing to think that prices are going to crash, but yet every month we get new data and prices continue to rise? Uh, today we're going to talk about rents throughout the United States beyond $2,000. And we're going to start off today with a headline here and some data out of Redfin. Rental market tracker, typical U.S. asking rent surpassed $2,000 for the first time in May. Yet a lot of people out there, a lot of channels are out there telling you that prices were going to start coming down for homes, for rents, are going to crash. And here we are just in the past month. We have this data out now. This actually just came out a few days ago. Uh, $2,000 median rent. This is the first time median rents have surpassed $2,000 in the United States, the first time ever in recorded history. And people say, well, how can this be? Everybody's getting further in debt. Uh, people's wages aren't keeping up with the cost of living. How can rents keep rising? Well, one thing important that people should remember is that a lot of landlords are making up now for lost time. So a lot of people that weren't allowed to be evicted and a lot of the landlords that were prevented from removing their tenants and raising rents, or both, are now making up for lost time, for lost profits, for lost income. And that's a problem when you have so many people renting instead of owning in California. It's actually over 50% of people rent versus own because the prices are so high. And when we look at this chart here, also out of Redfin, we see a line going all the way back to early 2019. So this gives us a snapshot of over three years. And not only did rents not come down, did they not go lower, um, the acceleration, the rate of increase is even higher. If you look to the far right here on this chart, you'll see the sudden increase just at the beginning of 2022 which again, most people didn't expect. They thought things would level out or stop going up so fast. And again, a lot of people even predicted falling prices this year, but it's not happening. We have to ask ourselves, why? Why is this not happening? Well, that's because the landlords that buy these homes, and a lot of times it's really big companies that buy these homes to rent out, they don't have to lower the prices because people are gonna either pay the rent or not have a place to live. It's pretty simple, but there's more to it. And yes, these companies, uh, these real estate companies that buy homes to rent them out, they are trying to get as much profit as possible. That's what a business is supposed to do. Some people look at it on the flip side and they call it greed. Well, is it greed or is it just a business doing what a business does? They're trying to make as much money as possible. And let's look at the top 10 cities where rents went up the fastest year over year. This is just in one year. Austin, Texas, 48%. Nashville, Tennessee, 32%. Seattle, 32%. Cincinnati, 32%. Miami, Florida, 29%. Fort Lauderdale, 29%. West Palm Beach, Florida, 29%. New York City, I don't know who wants to still move to New York City, 24%. And there's only three metropolitan areas that saw rents drop, and that's Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 10% uh, down year over year, Kansas City, and Minneapolis, Minnesota. I will go ahead and link to this article, and it does break down many different metropolitan areas, as you can see right here. And scrolling through this, even Detroit, Michigan is up 13% year over year. So something big and very strange is happening. Well, here's what everybody has been getting wrong. Yes, Americans are buried under the highest debt levels ever. So how does everyone keep paying these rents? Well, factor this into the equation. Over the past 10 to 12 years, this bull market that we've had, we saw a lot of people get rich on paper, a lot of paper wealth in the stock market and other currencies. Uh, digital currencies, etc. Now we're seeing the markets come down and that digital wealth 
is being erased. Uh, will it come back? Uh, maybe, but who knows how long it's going to take. But it's going to take some time for this to play out in the rental market and in the housing market. And I do believe that at some point we're going to see rents level out. It's simply impossible to have people getting further and further into debt, the cost of living going higher. But to have people afford rising rents to infinity. So at some point, yes, there's got to be a breaking point. There's got to be a straw that breaks the camel's back. Well, how far down the road is that? And when it happens, will they implement other rescue programs that would prevent rents from falling? Maybe more eviction moratoriums. And then all the landlords that aren't getting their rents, uh, will they implement more foreclosure moratoriums? So even these landlords and companies that bought thousands of homes cannot lose their homes even if people stop paying rent. Uh, that could happen and that could prevent prices from falling just like we saw all these rescue programs come out in 2020 that really distorted prices distorted both the housing market and the cost of rents well it appears a shift is already happening as we see more headlines like this one this is out of oregon live eviction rates climb as protections for oregon renters dwindle and yes here we are uh, over two years beyond the onset of the health crisis and there are cities out there still with these protections in place but we also have to talk about the massive rental assistance programs that were implemented after the health crisis so it may have seemed like a good thing at the time but it's something else that you add on top of the pile it distorted the market it prevented rents from falling right when people with no income no savings can still pay rent because of the assistance program, then the landlords across America where this is happening are never going to drop their prices. All right, so there's a lot of different angles we have to look at this from, uh, but please let me know down in the comments. You, the viewer, you listening right now, a lot of you are a lot smarter than me. I'm just a guy that's worked in finance, has worked in real estate lending, and uh, like to do a lot of news and uh, digging and research for you and bring you this information. But you, the viewer, please let me know what you think down in comments. Does this end later this year when people hit a brick wall financially, when bankrupts, bankruptcies begin to surge, as I think is going to be inevitable looking at the levels of debt? Um, or does this continue um, to what we've seen in some other countries where you see inflation that doesn't stop, runaway inflation? Uh, maybe even hyperinflation. Is that uh, being done? Um, is it by design? Uh, you let me know down below. Or are we going to see uh, declining prices and crashing prices? If so, let me know when. And I'd really like to hear your thoughts on this. Thanks everybody for watching. Bull Boom Bear Bust out. Keep stacking. Stay well. Bye for now. Peace.